<laughs> Luna. I'm dying. All right, I have, I have to use my right hand. I cannot use my left hand. In my I got it. Okay. So in this deck, <laughs> we're gonna have cards that destroy lands, um, cards that punish lands. Uh, <laughs> and card, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, and then like cards that make shit more expensive. And then we're just gonna have other, right? Um, I'll be here, but I'm gonna be face down on my desk. Runner's the worst shit. Oh my god. <laughs> She's gotten fucking stronger since like two days ago or something. I guess it's also probably because I'm sitting down. I do hope you feel better though. Life sucks enough as it is. Um, this makes shit more expensive. Spellbinder makes shit more expensive. Um, I guess this fucks with lands, and then you're just quote unquote value. So anything essentially that doesn't fit those criteria would go here. Um, put this in the fucks with lands. I'm gonna put this in the fucks with lands. Um, this is punishes lands, which might need to just be fucks with lands. This blows them the fuck up. How did you stay? Out of here. Makes it more expensive. Kind of makes it more expensive. Fragment reality, you're supposed to be in the center. Smell a bitch. All right. This is roughly what we're looking at. Technically, these are all in this category as well, but. God damn it, I wish I had the owned an arbiter in this. It would be so, it would be so good. Um, so, yeah, what I'm going to do first is, uh, you know, bump the numbers, as I oft do. It's the best way for me to figure out what exactly I want. And usually I'm just going to buff them all to three. I can make modification decisions afterwards. I remember when this card was fun to play in Historic, and then they nerfed it. And then they then uh, they made it fun to play again, because it doesn't require... Uh, or in Timeless, everything is fucking good. Instead of being fucking garbage. Okay. So what I'm looking at here essentially is that was strange. So this is what I'm looking at here is I need to create a deck that allows me to control the amount of mana that my opponent has access to while still killing them right that's the thing i still need to be able to kill them um and one of the other things that i really need to look for is the ability to um have action against decks that don't care about a high land count such as a like full aggro decks um now i think that means i mean peacekeeper's already pretty decent because it's a nice vigilance blocker but i think that means i probably need to keep apparition um, so I'm actually going to look first at my land destruction. So, Cleansing Wildfire is the cheapest, right? It is the cheapest way for me to just blow up someone's land. It can be any land. It doesn't even have to be a non-basic, which is very important. Our opponent can search for a basic. Hopefully, 
I would have Avian Mind Sensor out to make it harder to do that. Um, but what's nice is I do get to replace the card. Additionally, I can use it on a Darkseal Citadel of mine to ramp myself to four mana so I can play something like a, a Raised Tyrant, a Krenko's thingy, or a Kicked uh, Rune Blaster, right? So that is uh, a consideration, right? This probably going to stay. Geomancer's Gambit is like Cleansing Wildfire, except it costs one more mana. Wait, actually, is that all? Oh, it literally is. I thought it had, I thought it had like something. It is the same card. All right, get fucked. Get fucked. Get actually, get actually demolished. Get out. Um, Rune Blaster is a garbage creature on rate. It's a three mana two one with haste. Sure, the haste is whatever. I would rather have a single point of toughness. Um, it dies to goddamn everything, but it's the cheapest inclusion in the deck because of the fact that it's a creature. Because it's a creature, um, it's less of an issue to cast, right? If I have a Thalia, if I want to play a Thalia on turn two, it costs me like my entire turn to play land and then use Cleansing Wildfire um, because of the tax, right? So this, as, as my tax numbers increase, my... Bring Wingmer, you're not supposed to be over there. My ability to um, cast the non-creatures uh, decreases. This dog. Uh, Stun Rain just blows things up. Luna, please. Okay, okay, okay. I need to text my sister. I don't know if she's bored or if she has to go to the bathroom. Uh, Krenko's Buzz Crusher. The reason I like Krenko's Buzz Crusher is... Ow! Ow. Um, one, it's a creature. So, like Rune Blaster, it doesn't have the same uh, potential issues. Or, yeah, as having non-creature spells does, right? Um, additionally, it costs... That's not, that's not the emoji that I put. God damn it, Luna. Um, sorry, I lost my turn of thought because my dog is being crazy. Uh, right. Um, so you get to, you get to blow things up. Um, you don't have to blow things up if you don't want to. Um, obviously like a, the dream, right, is going Avon Mind Sensor into a Buzz Crusher to blow up to blow up one of your opponent's lands. And then if you have a uh, Citadel, blow up Citadel. Oh, never mind. This fuck. Okay, so this is actually an important uh, learning learning thing. Um So this this card, right? Destroy target land. Its controller may search for a thing. Bus crusher. For each land destroyed this way. What this means is uh, this does not work the same way, because the land actually has to be destroyed. Um, this doesn't care, it just needs to target a land. The the destroy target land and next sentence, they are not technically connected. Um, in this, they technically are. Um, which does make this worse in my estimation, which is unfortunate. Yeah. When I So when I first read this card in, like during previous season or whatever, I was thinking of this deck. Bro, um, I was thinking of this deck, and I was thinking specifically of the Dark Seal thing, but I guess I didn't read the card well enough. Um, unfortunate. <laughs> Luna, stop. Okay, I think she has to go to the bathroom. Um, I wouldn't play more than two of these potentially. Stone Rain is possibly also a two, as would be Ruin Blaster. Okay, I will. I will return the the kind of cue for trying to do land things. Um, I do like 
Graze Tyrant. Razor Tyrant? Oh, Town Razor Tyrant. Okay, I'm dumb. Um, I do like the Tyrant. Do I prefer it over... I have, I have no idea if, if the music is even audible, but before it was too fucking loud, so. Um, do I like it over this? So this, this is, you know, a punishy thing. This doesn't, like, this doesn't work with fetch lands very well. I think, unfortunately, it is not good enough. Because we have plenty of ways of dealing damage through lands. That I would rather just run a... Like, because you don't have to destroy a land with this. Um, this deck needs four of my sensors, absolutely. Um, this deck probably wants four Archons as well. Um, and it might want for Archivist, um, because obviously it works with fetches, but it would also work if my opponent is able to, um, grab a land. I still get to, uh, recoup more of my loss, right? Like, if I'm able to play Archivist, like, they crack a fetch, I flash an Archivist, I gain, I gain a life and a draw card, right? On a subsequent turn, I Cleansing Wildfire them. Right. They, they still get to have their land, but I get to gain a life, draw a card, draw a card, right? Um, so it's possible that I want you at four. I'm unsure. Now we have the, the kind of punish you for, essentially, for, sh uh, for using fetches. Um, I like Harsh Mentor because it's not limited to just fetch lands, right? It's, you know, in, uh, I do wish it was a... I do wish it included enchantments, but I understand that Red's not really allowed to do stuff like that necessarily. Um, I like that this affects artifacts, so that um, obviously not on the first activation, but on subsequent activations of the One Ring, this like will continue dealing damage to them, which is quite nice. Um, the benefit of this card is one, it has a mana seek. It has a mana seek. Um, but on the flip side, being able to potentially shut down someone who's doing a combo would be very helpful. For example, if someone casts um, Show and Tell, right? Um, and I know for a fact there's a Show and Tell Omniscience deck. Um, it gets tricky if your opponent has more than just, show, uh, just Omniscience in hand, because they could... There are different things. You can cast this in response, right? Um, and then they can choose something that isn't uh, Omniscience to put into play, right? Um, or you can wait until Omniscience resolves, and then once, as soon as you get priority, cast it so they can't cast any more after whatever they just cast. Um, but it, it does have, like, potential to do more things. Uh, again, this is another just way of picking someone from playing lands or, you know, getting lands out of their deck with Wildfire. Notably, this does include me, um, and this will always essentially exile a land. So, this is this theoretically is always going to hurt like a motherfucker. Um, what is nice is that um, Gatekeeper with Thalia is quite nice because they are both uh, first strikers. Immolation Shaman is probably the weakest. It's essentially Harsh Mentor with more defensive stats and a mana sink. What does Necropotent say? Oh, these are each single individual instances. How quaint. Yeah, that makes me think that Celebrant will be the stronger card. Because then Necropotence costs two life per card. Which is which is a big deal. Um so yeah, I think I think Shaman 
gets fucked here. I shall only do 10. I will likely need... I would likely need to have 24 lands in this deck. And then we go over to here. Um, Esper Sentinel is pretty reasonable. If our opponent doesn't have the ability to pay for things, um, being able to continually draw cards... Because, again, like we're using resources to potentially deprive them of resources, but we're, we're not always depriving them of resources, right? Like, sometimes you cast Cleansing Wildfire, uh, your opponent just gets a fucking land, right? And then you've you've not gone down in advantage, but you've gone down in, in tempo because, like, you didn't add to your board or whatever. She put her door, she put her toy in a position where she couldn't open the door herself. Dumb, dumb. Um, yeah, Sentinel would allow me to still gain uh, resources by either, or gain advantage, by either making our opponent lose a bit of tempo by needing to pay the one, or by just giving me more cards. And giving me more cards is usually pretty good. Um, I mean, Thalia is Thalia, she's great. Uh, Peacekeeper is fantastic. What's really awesome um, is you don't have to choose a non-land. I can play this on turn three. I get to see my opponent's card. And sometimes people are dumb and they don't think of pithing needle effects. So my opponent could already have fetches in play and just not crack them. If there's nothing in their hand that I care about, if there's nothing on the field that I care about, you just named that fetch land. They, it costs more to crack their fetch. They're now down on mana twice, right? One, because they functionally don't have a land. You functionally destroy the land. And then two, the second time is when they use their mana to use that land to actually get land, right? Um, it's It would be brutal. I think this is worth keeping. Um, Spellbinder is very similar insofar as it just makes things cost more. I think... I think that Wingmare is too cute um, insofar as Spellbinder functionally does what this does, but this affects me as well. Um, Spellbinder is also a stronger card. It has three power. Um, yeah, I think Wingmare has to go. Okay. And then we go over here. Go over here to kind of fun stuff. Um... I don't think we can do this. So, while Appraiser would be better in this deck than 6, 10, uh, 34, 20 or more. That wouldn't include this either. Or the four of those. So it's the ten non creatures. The twenty four lands. It's thirty four. Uh, it'd be thirty eight if we're including just four Inquisitor captains. That'll leave us with twenty two. Yeah, so Inquisitor Captain is a no-go even before we decide to have this. Yeah. Appraiser has a different problem. We always want to have Archon of Amiria out. Like, this is a card that is just strong, generally. Um, if we have that out, this card sucks. Inquisitor Captain doesn't have the same problem because you're not casting the spell off of Inquisitor Captain. You're just putting the bitch in play. Oh, this is not this is not the game. All right, still on. Um, appraiser requires you to cast it. Excuse me. I guess technically it doesn't require you to cast it. Like you can put it in your hand, but then you've played a four mana card that didn't that like drew you a card, and that's not very good. 
So this card is on the chopping block. Um, Skycalif Apparition, as I said, like, this deck already has potential to make us lose a little bit of life. Like, we definitely are going to need to have um, fetches in this deck uh, because our colors... If we don't run this, maybe our color situation is not going to be bad enough to need fetches. Hmm. Regardless, what I was saying essentially is a uh, aggro deck hurt. I'm just going to help against aggro deck. I think you're fine. Um, Ranger Captain. Ranger Captain is nice because it allows me to potentially grab Ragavan if I play it. But again, I think that there has to be some concessions made in order to include the LD package. So I think Ranger Captain is more likely to go. Notably, I, I didn't put him in the cut mode. I think legitimately he just gets to leave. Um, Source of Plowshares is just too fucking strong to not include. Um, it's possible I want to lower these numbers. <sighs> Ragavan's a stupid card. Ragavan. Is a, is a must-answer card for my opponent. Gives me card resources, essentially. And gives me mana resources. Being able to play Ragavan on turn... Being able to play Ragavan on turn one. Potentially. Um, attack on turn two and hit my opponent. Would give me three mana on turn two. Allowing me to play any of my fantastic free drops. Right? Literally any of those. Or blow up one of their fucking lands. Just outright destroy it. That's incredibly strong. Late game, right, if there's a situation where I've run out of resources, but my opponent also has, like, run out of resources, like, recouping lands or whatever, I can dash it to get the immediate benefit, and now the mana might not matter, but being able to just take my opponent's cards could. I think Ragafan is good enough that it should be in this deck. Which means I don't think I will have room at the end of the day for Appraiser. Okay. So that was just the... This is the fastest way I can think of re... Reorganizing them. So now I have to... Dis now I have to make cuts based on... Uh, mana value. I think Buzz Crusher goes. I like it. Oh, man. I really do like Buzz Crusher. I would love to play Buzz Crusher. I don't think I'm able to play Buzz Crusher. And for what it's worth, I think if we cut Buzz Crusher. We can probably afford to go back down to 23 lands. Yeah, I think I think that's probably for the best. I'll include this as well. Okay. We don't need giver runes as much in this deck. Our creatures are going to continually be uh, like be removed. But no individual creature, other than, like, Archon, is so important that I want to be including Giver. So Giver, for that reason, you're out. You've been, you've been chopped. If I have to include the two mana, like, value shits, I love that this is, this has first strike. I love that it doesn't, you don't have to exile land, right? You can, you can exile the an instant and your opponent can just keep getting domed. But, I think I would rather make room for the other two because I do think both of these are stronger mainly because they hit um, 
ba there's like collateral damage. Uh, this one against Necropone specifically. Um, but this one also just against, I mean, both of them, uh, just against things like the One Ring. Do I want four Ragged Bones? I don't think I need four Ragged Bones. So rather just have fragment. I don't know what's going on with this client today. Oh fuck, I forgot Everheart. Oh shit, and mana died. As much as I don't want to admit it, I think Manatide still might be too cute. Hey, hold on the boss. It has been a minute. How are you doing? I need to fucking eat my apple. I think we're lowering our swords here. I don't think we need Ferocidon. Yeah, that's fine. Doing pretty good, getting back into Arena with the new set. MKM is pretty cool. Been spamming Rakdos, Anvil, Burn, and Explorer. Ew, you play Explorer? Timeless is better. No, I'm kidding. I, I still like Explorer. I like Explorer, Historic, and Timeless for different reasons. However, technically speaking, my incentive to play Historic is lower because of Timeless. Timeless is my base format now. Um, historic is... I want to play a deck that includes most you know, stupid things. It might have to not have a card that is super, super stupid and only in Timeless. Um, but the the level of insanity is lower. <laughs> so the, the stupid deck is a little bit more viable. Um, I wish I had the wild card for Timeless. Yeah. Yeah, I, um... I was thinking the other day that I really wish Wizards did something to make... these special cards more reasonable. Like, Stone Range should not... Like, I have a full set of them. But Stone Range, it shouldn't... You shouldn't need a rare wild card to craft this. Like, just because it was rare in the set that it came out in uh, doesn't mean that this shouldn't just be a fucking common. Because that's what it is, right? Um, stuff like that does bother me. But... I can't do anything about it. If only I could... Do we decrease Skyclave that person? I can put them in sideboard. Need to cut seven. We're down to twenty-three. Uh oh. What is it? Connecting jet? I hope 
it didn't go down. That's weird. I do not know what just happened. That was very strange. Anyway. I'm putting Rune Blaster on this side for now. And the reason I'm putting Rune Blaster on this side is because, as, again, Rune Blaster as just a creature, kind of garbage. Um, I wish it was not as garbage. <laughs> but there are potentially decks where I will want to bring this in. Brawl is also fun, but there's like no one's to play it. Yeah. Yeah. Is very is very true, and I, I, it's so sick. There's so many cool brawl commanders, or cool commanders in general on arena. I keep saying the same damn ones though, and it tires me. I can like trim, trim. I made an Is It Gandalf Brawl deck and it's so fun. I need to get back into Brawl with y'all. That was fun. It was just annoying to schedule because I'm, I'm stupid and I always schedule like the night before. Three cards. Nine, fifteen, sixteen. I guess Peacekeeper is going to be better in general. The main reason is Bowmaster. And Peacekeeper can still hit things in play. So we're going to Yeet Spellbinder. I don't know if we're going to Yeet it completely or not. But this gives me the base deck. So now, we go to the sideboard. What are the things that I need to deal with? I need to deal with creature decks. So I do think we want at least two Scott Clay Reparations. And at least two Dawnbringer Clerics. have to do it like this, unfortunately. Um, I need another frag. Frag is just very potentially good. Whether or not it's actually good, I, I don't I don't know. I haven't really gotten a chance to use it. Um, having another rest in peace is always nice. Rest in piss. I'll throw an Evan Hart in here. Eberhart. What exactly do you say? No, you're not worth it. Gatekeeper. This does damage to white or blue things. It's an option, but I don't think I care. We definitely want an additional Roiling Vortex because of Show and Tell. Show and Tell can book itself. Um, ah, Blood Sun. Blood Sun is mostly for Titan decks, but it still works well against other things. Um, and Chalice. Chalice on one might legitimately be good in the LD version. I have to do the thing where I like can sort this. You go up here, you go down here. Down there. You go up, you come down. I can't... Oh, it's Chalice. I hate, I hate this shit so much. 
perfect, perfect. I really like the first strike, but I don't think that this should actually. Play to land, okay. I just wanted to double check. If it was like, or a land enters the battlefield or something like that, then I would consider it, but it doesn't, so fuck it. Yeah, double chalice, wind blasters, blood suns, apparition. So this is like against the aggro decks. Spellbinder, I think I can just remove, unfortunately. What the fuck? Stop doing shit like this. Rip for the graveyard decks that I've not seen. Cleric. Good in general. But mostly for aggro decks. these, what do I find to be the least good? This is mana value. Yes. I do think I'm going to cut a chalice. And so the reason I'm cutting one chalice is because it's still going to be difficult to play chalice when I'm blowing up. Um, chalice on one still can potentially hit me but you know if i go turn one whatever of these turn two if i have chalice and thalia i'm playing thalia every time which means that on turn three i can play chalice for one but at this point maybe it doesn't matter anymore um so i think this is fine and last but absolutely least we get to the lands um we are never using a ganjo we are never using ardenvale um, let's see. What's our demo looking like? We have 15 out of 28 creatures as human. Um, I do not think we are going to have even a Patrician's one of those. Um, we have access to Ghost Quarter and Demo Field. I don't know how many I should do of each. Ghost Quarter is nice because it costs nothing to destroy a land. It can also hit basics for what that's worth. Demolition Field costs things to activate, but you can get a card too, which is quite nice. And these, of course, are mine. Right, so these are... <coughs> we'll put duels over here. So I can figure out what switches I'm looking for. Probably only want two Darksteel Citadels, and I might want three of these now. One of the reasons I'm more comfortable doing that here is because although we do have Skyclave Apparitions and even technically uh, Rune Blasters on the side, we do not have any double pipped cards. Backside of this doesn't count most of the time. Um, we don't have any double pipped cards, so we don't care as much, right, about having colorless lands. There are going to be situations where having a colorless land fucks us. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, I'm... Okay, am I taking a lot of damage in this version? No. In fact, I have a tiny bit of potential life gain. So Battlefield Forge is potentially fine. Um, I do not ever want a land to come and tap on turn 1, 2, or 3. Get fucked. Inspiring Vantage is probably, defi probably definitely, it's definitely going to be in here. Sundown passing up itself. So for sure, I'm playing... Max Inspiring Advantages. Max Sacred Foundries. I will need 14 red sources. This is 8. Okay, that's less fortunate. Um, it does mean that I just have to cut some of these. Which is potentially fine. Um, I'm only going to have four fetches in here. I don't need forge. Okay, so this is 8, 10, 12, 
12. Start doing well, D&D &D was cancelled today, so I've been video editing instead. Nice, nice. It's a good thing someone's maintaining, pro uh, maintaining productivity and consistency. I think I was impatient painting my nails. I don't think the color is as vibrant uh, as it should be if I'd waited a little bit longer. Alright, who are we fighting? Some old guy. That's gross. How dare you be old? Um, We have a good turn one. We have a lot of mana, but one of them is demo field, so I think it's fine. Maintaining. <laughs> I'll sweat. Uh, okay. So blowing up the lands is less valuable than otherwise could be. Drawing this land was very bad. Blue green. I'm assuming this is going to be salt time mid. Um, it could be a teamer deck. No shot at bands. If only I had my sensor out right now. So they have four mana. What I think four. So unless I get, like, exactly Thalia. Okay. And for what it's worth, they still could have some nonsense. No idea what they got with Tutor. Interesting. Mind sensor has flash. Solution, draw what you need, yeah. I could attack with Thalia, I'm not sure that I want to. If I play Sacred Foundry untapped, it shows that I have something. If I play Demo Field, it shows that I do land destruction. Well, not necessarily. Plenty of people are playing Demo Field. Um, do I attack with Thalia? I have no fucking idea what this deck could have. Uh, I guess I could have that. Sure. Because if they have Bowmasters, they're going to kill Thalia anyway. Searching top four. Unless they kill this with like a, a, a fatal push. Fuck yeah. You got nothing. I'll take a card, thanks. Impulse. The fuck deck is this? I have to assume this is Saltai Show and Tell? Yeah, I mean, the fact, like, they lost a land, right? They had to use a, la a land with Death Rite Shaman, so this Death Rite Shaman does nothing right now. It's show and tell. That's what I figured. 
Um, I thought it was obviously great for show and tell because um, it makes it so that their spells, their non-creature spells do actually cost things. Um, wow, yeah. That's... Oh, it might honestly just be for Do Dr. Shaman. Oh, okay. Gotcha. We can't even cast Show and Tell here. Because Show and Tell would cost four things to follow you. Uh, next turn, having Anointed Peacekeeper, I think is the correct decision. Yo. Insane. Okay, they got a card that they wanted. Uh, guess what, though? So I can blow up. Comes in tapped. No, it doesn't come in tapped. Uh, the, the double, the triple Thalia is not great, but I mean, it's fine. Um, so here we can blow up one of the lands. It kind of does things. I do think that just playing Peacekeeper is the way to go. Uh, show and tell, omniscient symbols, grocery brand. Um, I mean, yeah, we just named show and tell. That would cost even more. Like, these things, these are never getting cast normally. Impulse does not matter. Yeah, they have no removal. Uh, I have lethal, yeah. Okay. So if this is show and tell, we want Roiling Vortex. I think we want Fragment. We want Dawn. Yes. Cards that we don't necessarily need. Stone Rain for sure. Um, like, Avid Mindsetter is sufficient, in my opinion, to do what I need it to do. Uh, or to do the, the land destruction part. Um, I think playing these extra ones, especially on the draw, aren't going to help me. Um, I didn't see any basics from my opponent that I... No. Um, does Saffron Olive's list have basics? But yeah, I think this is fine. Um, Chalice on 3 is 6 lands. Or 6 mana. I don't think that's something I can get away with. It does, okay. How many? Remember during deck building? When I said, um, sometimes the colorless cards will fuck you? It's one of them times. Uh, this hand is final. We have this on turn two, one of these on turn three, based on what our opponent needs. Third, four, okay. Um, I don't have the cards that make this matter, so I think we yeet this. See, I can put this in from show and tell. So let's do this. Each player may put an artifact, creature, or enchantment, or land. Yeah. So if my opponent plays um, show and tell, I can throw this in. Yeah, so that means on turn two, I'm probably playing that. Um, they didn't play Deathrite Shaman here, but I think I am okay just cracking this now. And grabbing a Foundry tag. Like, oh, I'm showing them I don't have anything. Shields are down. I this whatever. So yeah, I guess theoretically they can play a land and immediately get show and tell. No. 
It wouldn't be just game. I have Archon. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. They cast Show and Tell. From Show and Tell, I put Archon in. They can't cast any more spells for the rest of that turn. Now, they could cast spells subsequent turns. Um, obviously, it's different if they, instead of doing Omniscience, go for, like, Emer uh, not Emerald, um, Grizzlebrand. Yeah. I mean, this deck is, like, built specifically to beat Show and Tell. Style decks, I should say. Decks, decks that want to do non-creature shit really do die to Death and Taxes. Death and Taxes' biggest weakness are creature decks that can be bigger, so like red-green style creature decks, and decks that just are so full of value that you just lose your value. Yeah. They learned. They learned they had to do that immediately because they know that next turn I could have Aven Mind Center. Uh, we always attack. And so the reason I'm doing this is because... I will cast this first. They don't have omniscience. Like, if they put in a tractor or crystal brand, like, this is. It's not the best situation for me. Yeah, fuck. I think I play Rolling Vortex as well. Move each player's upkeep, yeah. Yeah, and what's nice is that, um, uh, sure, I'll play this, play this. What's nice about, um, Archon is that it's strong against the field in general because of fetch lands. You miss Muxus Goblins? Gross. So do they have removal for my Archon? If they have removal... So they would need removal for my Archon as well as ways to draw cards. And they did not have that. So they were uh, roasted by Red Splash Death. Um, I did realize something during that game. Initially, I thought I would have more, um, like, mono-white situations, so I only included white fetches. Um, I should include two red fetches as well, because in that situation, I wouldn't have been able to get a uh, basic mountain if I wanted to do that and not take damage. Um... Bloodstained Mire. So Bloodstained Mire, Scalding Tarn, Wooded Foothills. Uh, white and red share green, so we're going to do Wooded Foothills. Scrolling. 
strike. 